<laughs> um, let's uh, let's talk about Real Housewives of Orange County. Uh, Melanie, what were your what were your thoughts about Orange County? Was there anyone that stood out to you here? All right, this one was hard to me be- for me because although they all look different in the face, they all have the same aesthetic sort of when i saw a brunette i was like oh thank god there's a brunette like i just like <laughs> it was one tell apart. yeah because yeah, i was having trouble telling them apart not because they all look alike but because they're all kind of going for the same look and because it's just getting introduced to them i was like oh, what like who um it kind of reminded me of the other day i was at the rom the whatever the ontario museum Whatever the R stands for. Is it royal? I don't know. Um, royal, I think. Royal. <laughs> um, I was very regal. Uh, I was there the other day, and there was a bust of an ancient Egyptian queen. And it was like, there was a note that's like, this isn't what she would have looked like. It's been augmented to reflect the ideals of the time. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I'm seeing this in the housewives, in that like, <laughs> we're all doing our own version of this ideal look. And that feels very, yeah, more the sunnier states for me, as opposed to New York, where like, we're kind of having our own individual style. So I was yeah, like... 3,000 years from now, people are going to be excavating <laughs> yeah. DVDs of the Real Housewives of Orange County. <laughs> like like it's the, the, the pyramids of Giza and the and these and putting them up on the, on the, on the ROM and being like, this is the, the, it reflects the ideals of the these time. These were the ideals of the time. <laughs> yeah, that is what I thought. I was like, it's cyclical. Um, so... Okay, uh, taglines. I found these taglines were really interesting. Um, I'll shout out a couple. The best one by far for me personally is in Orange County, I call the shots. And it's always tequila. That's Shannon. <laughs> and I was just like, it's just... give that an A. Yeah. yeah, it's just front to back. It's good. It works. It's like, <laughs> it adds up. Um, the other two that stood out for me... Um, Okay, I will say I struggled with Emily, but I think that's because, and this is something they say on the 30 Going on 13 podcast, a podcast I also I listen to a lot, um, we hate most in others what we see in ourselves. And I saw Emily as a bit of a pick-me girl. Are you both aware of what that means? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just because so I saw her a bit of like, I'm just one of the, I'm just cool. Like, and I, I have trouble with that persona because i will say it was one that i kind of i i i was aligned with at a certain point in life that i'm very much i'm trying to go from an emily to a jenna i guess is what i could say (laughs) um so i was like like her tagline if you want to waste my time at least have me a taco like when women are like oh my god i eat food ah like i that i have trouble with that (laughs) Um, and like taco, it's like the quintessential. It's either taco or burger because that's like yeah, a pizza more sometimes. pizza. Yeah, like a junky, right. like quote unquote male food. And I'm like, oh, get over yourself. Right. Um, that being said, her outfit at the pool party, I love. We can get into that. Um, oh, and then Gina. This struck me. I really like Gina on site. She has a cuckoo accent. I was like, where is this girl from? She sounds like she's from like three different places. But I liked her (laughs) because she had a bob so I could tell her apart from everyone, first of all. Um, I liked her because, uh, but I, okay, sorry. I'm getting, I'm tripping over myself. I guess I was more struck by these women than I thought. I liked her, but her tagline, the difference between my past and my present, well, that's just apples and oranges. I was like, that feels like someone who's very embarrassed by their past. The fact that you even have to mention it in your tagline, as opposed to just being who you are now. The fact that you have to be like, like there was a girl on RuPaul's Drag Race, Roxy Andrews, where she always had to mention, I was a bitch on my first season, but I'm here to be like, and I, it's, I sense a defensiveness <laughs> or like an embarrassment. And I was like, oh, that that makes me sad that you can't just be like, here I am. This is who I am now. Take me as as who I am now. And then real quick, my other. I really like Tamara. I was like, <laughs> I was just like immediately just thought she was cute and um something about her struck me i'm not sure what it is maybe i'll figure it out as we go but i was just like there was just something very appealing about tamra to me maybe she's just cute i don't know but those are my initial initial thoughts yeah i i think like 
Tamra is one of the best housewives that ever played the game. So yeah, that's a very good pick for someone that would, you know, be stand out. There's, I think there's like any number of reasons why you could like Tamra and they'd all be a hundred percent valid. She's got so much dimension to her as a, as a housewife, as a character on these, both in terms of, you know, just how she conducts herself on screen in order to, um, to seem like very like honest or also very manipulative and, um, and also just very unhinged a lot of the time. Yeah. She's, yeah. Just a, she's just such a fucking wild card. She's so unpredictable. And that's why she's the engine of the show to me. Yeah. She totally. definitely reminds me of um, there are certain women that when I meet them, like, yeah, kind of Tamara types, like party girl, off the wall, cuckoo, fun, that bring out a side of me that I don't often get to hang out with. And I get really. Um, intoxicated by their presence and I find myself like just acting a way I wouldn't normally saying yes to things I wouldn't normally and um I think everyone needs one of those like one of those friends where you're like I have no idea what's going to happen tonight so that's part of why but that's probably part of why I responded to her she reminds me of those wild card friends where people are like oh you hang out with her and I'm like yeah she's great like kind of like um Chloe from the circle are too hot to handle or, or perfect match. She's just like this like party British girl who's like, ah, and like not normally my type, but I, I love her. I would die for her. So it's just like, I, yeah, I love those outliers, those, those wild cards. Yeah. I, I think like that's a great read on Tamara and that's something that she really plays to her advantage. She's able to like get people to come along for the ride and, um, use that to create, you know, social opportunities for herself, whether it's so that they get in trouble with someone else or do her bidding for her in whatever sort of plan or uh, exer- whatever she's trying to exercise within the group socially. Um, she she uses that to her advantage and is still like really, really likable. Uh, what uh, what were your highlights from this uh, this episode? OK, let's see here. Oh, I will say real quick that I think this is the, I think this, this version of the show seems to be the template for when people parody housewives because the confessionals, the very brightly lit, like green screen of your house, like confessionals. I was like, oh, I've seen people do this on TikTok. And I always thought, oh, that's low a low budget version of and then it's like no that's actually what it looks like there there's something very (laughs) sterile low budget like fluorescent lighting almost that i was like oh this is the show like so those parodies are very accurate so that feels like this show really informs a lot of things i've seen oh (laughs) okay i'm just scrolling down and seeing the highlights that i bolded um the first one i have (laughs) i don't know why this stood out to me but um i wrote Gina's boyfriend's being mean to her about the pasta and I feel defensive for her (laughs) because I don't like like she's already in this vulnerable situation where like she's she's done the thing she's made friends with her like ex's partner and they're hanging out and then this person's like at least that's what I thought was happening and then she's like like I said I didn't know it was happening a lot of the time uh but then she was like (laughs) Oh, this one time Gina made a handmade uh, a meal and it was so nice. And he was like, well, she didn't really make it. And like, I understand teasing someone. <laughs> like, I understand. Yeah. And then he was like, it wasn't real pasta. And like, I'm like, you know, I understand there's a time and a place to tease someone. But when someone's getting complimented and loved on, like, I just and I, I, I already felt defensive of Gina because I'm like, she has some kind of past that she's very ashamed of. And, and now he's like, whatever. And like. I also just feel like throughout this episode, I was seeing Gina being like such a bright light and so wanting to um, speak about things on such a deep level. And there was another scene where her and Travis were having dinner and she was just like, wow, I'm just really feeling this way right now. And he was going, yeah, totally. (laughs) I just, I was like, what a boring man. And, and I'm like, just because, (laughs) just because he's not toxic doesn't mean he's 
the pinnacle of like what boyfriend you should have, yeah. Gina. Like I think she deserves better. <laughs> so I was just very defensive of a girl I had just met at this point when he started making fun of her with the pasta. <laughs> <laughs> A, a rare misplay from uh, her boyfriend, uh, Travis. I think that he's, like, very awkward on TV. And like you said, Melanie, he's, like, very boring. And <laughs> his greatest trait is that he's not toxic. That's, like, that's <laughs> that's his, like, his whole thing is, like, he's not, like, problematic. And he, like, says the right things. But aside from that, it's, like, he's so boring to me and yeah that's that's bang on you're you're speaking my language with that (laughs) okay good i was gonna say the same thing honestly he is just like a really boring man uh and then she's talking about this meal he made and she's like yeah i think that was the last time you made a meal and then it's like actually i think it was like two years ago like like, all right maybe but (laughs) did did she she just say it (laughs) oh and then she goes out of her way to make a meal his favorite meal by the way and his reception was lukewarm for someone who was like, oh, you haven't cooked for two years. Then she was like, is it good? And he was like, yeah, it's good. And I was like, can you just be effusive for one moment? <laughs> like, can you just be like, well, thank you. That this is really nice. Like, uh, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to be the most expressive, like animated person, but you could just make her feel appreciated for going out of her way to do this thing. At least he didn't say, yeah, the sauce is great. I love that brand. (laughs) (laughs) Are you both, do you, are you a canned sauce? Are you you two canned sauce boys? Do you, do you make your own sauce? No, I I stopped liking Gina at that moment, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It it depends on the situation, I will say. Yeah, it it depends on the situation. We actually do a lot of HelloFresh and their sauce that they typically have with whatever pasta dishes I really enjoy. We're not sponsored by HelloFresh, but if you we work for HelloFresh, you know, <laughs> just hit us up in our DM. <laughs> no, I, I just feel like if you're making a chicken parm and you're putting sauce out of the jar, what did you make? It's assembly. <laughs> it's not cooking. It's assembly. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I thought those artichokes looked really cute. They I, did. Yeah. The, yeah. the bowl of roasted artichokes. I'm not sure what they're doing with them, but it did look really cute. Yeah. Yeah. Because looked... they're just eating the leaves all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Who's to say? I haven't had artichokes in such a way, but I was like, that looks like a thing a chef would do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love how you said that like you were Gina. You, 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 you really mustered her like six states at the same time. Yeah. Actually. her. Okay. I'm so glad we line up on that because some words I was like, okay, what accent is that? And it would be like one word out of a sentence. And I was like, she's fascinating to me. Um, I, I'll do a, you know what? I'll do a jarred sauce. I also do HelloFresh and that's been opening me up to a world of, of, of little tips and tricks that I have really appreciated learning from the good people at HelloFresh. But you know what I like to do is take a prepackaged item and upgrade it with my own ingredients. That's usually what I do. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. Balsamic. In, in I my twenties, I loved getting the, uh, the, the frozen pizza and then like sprinkling some garlic powder on it that was like how i spiced up a frozen pizza when i was in my 20s i like totally great great trick craig yeah you you did the hand gesture like it was real fancy like a chef would do like sprinkle some garlic sauce yeah 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 it was very salt bay thinking uh it was closer to the time of emerald lagasse the bam oh yeah (laughs) bam you know you you throw a basil leaf on there and i'm believing you made that pizza um (laughs) so my next throw a basil leaf on there oh basil i believe you own a pizzeria (laughs) it's true (laughs) if you want to find a basil leaf you got to go into the garage (laughs) the carriage (laughs) um my next highlight okay i really liked when tamra and emily went for their little kitschy cowboy bar get together. I thought that was really sweet. Um, and like I said, I hadn't previously liked uh, Emily, but I liked them in this interaction. I think it would be so hard to have seen someone on television saying their unfiltered opinion of you and then sit across the table from that person and go over that. I was like, uh, they're made of stronger stuff than me. And I know they've been on this show a long time, but I was like, that's huge for me. Um, and, and just like Tamara saying, I'm really glad we're friends. Like just when people are open in such a way, like I have, because 
and as adults, it's hard to make friends. And like, I've had people in the comedy scene reach out to me and be like, I'd really like to be friends. And just when people are that transparent, it makes me smile. It's really sweet. Um, oh, I wrote, why am I getting emotional over this open communication and friendship? <laughs> That's what I wrote. Cause I was getting, <laughs> I was getting a little misty. I thought it was really sweet. And then, um, and, oh, and I laughed when Emily, um, she was like, Tamara was like, you called me the devil. And then later Emily was like, cheers to that, you devil bitch. And like the fact that yeah. they'd like turned it around that quickly. I thought that was a cute line. Like I said, I don't always love when people talk in sound bites, but that was a really fun when you can, when you're over it enough to make a joke about it. That's like the moment when you know you're okay. And uh, I just, I, I, yeah, I really liked, I really liked that interaction a lot. Yeah, I've got a lot of notes from this cowboy bar scene as well. This was, um, again, I'm always looking at the like the social gamesmanship of it, and I thought that this was a re- really interesting play by Emily to try to align herself a little bit more with them, or maybe not like fully like hatch out an alliance, but um, kind of things seemed like they were starting to settle after the last episode. It seemed like lines were kind of being drawn and uh, Tamara and Shannon's relationship was going to really be solidified as this really strong social force within the the show. Um, I think her going and being like open with Tamara and being like, Oh, where, where are things at with you and Shannon? Like seeing how, trying to get a read on it and then being like, well, this is what I heard from Heather. And this is like something that Gina has also heard. Have you heard this as well? Kind of confirming that, you know, Heather has been like talking shit. Yeah. And I I thought that it was really interesting that she was going to use this um, to position, you know, uh, Tamara and Shannon against, against Heather or see kind of how that impacts the relationship with with Tamara and Shannon, really just trying to like mix things up. I think one of the things that we see on a lot of like more boring seasons of Housewives is that we have sides that are very like pretty like well defined and you know there's not a lot of movement in terms of how people align with each other. Actually, I shouldn't say that because we just watched uh, a season of Real Housewives in New Jersey that was very much like that, which was fantastic. But I think it can make for more boring television if it's very like clear cut, well defined, you know, this side versus that side. But we're seeing a a big mix up on, on Orange County. And it's really interesting to watch how people are trying to keep that um keep the water agitated so that pieces are like moving and not, not ever settling. And I thought this was a really great scene. Um, since it was like, since Tamara was in a cowboy bar, bar, I was expecting her son Ryan to like saddle up and take their drink order. We didn't see that unfortunately, but I'm still not convinced he's uh, not, he's working at a ranch. <laughs> he's probably working okay. at that bar. He just, he's just out of yeah. sight. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know she had a son who was working at a ranch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, allegedly. He uh, oh. he shows up in every scene, like when they're just like um, lounging around the house or out at a party. He's wearing his like cowboy hat and his like <laughs> belt, belt buckle when it's really uncalled for. Um, really entertaining. Yeah, yeah, he just awkwardly saw Darcy and it's like, hey, howdy. Ah! <laughs> oh my god. Okay. He's hilarious. Now I want uh, that to bar didn't look fucking terrible though. I, I hate I hated that bar instantly. But it's but it's another great example of why I love these like weird Orange County settings. Like you go to this like fucking like fake simulated dive bar and order a bottle of champagne. <laughs> you previously see them order champagne at a bowling alley. Here we see them order champagne at a fake dive bar. It's the, the their world is so ridiculous. It's just a strange place where they live <laughs> but i will say i'm kind of you know to throw it back to my tagline i'm kind of that bitch like i love to like get sushi at a mall food court like i love like um sure. the the <laughs> like fancy versus not like doing something very fancy in a setting that's not fancy or vice versa like um eating with your hands in a restaurant where that would not be dignified like you know just like mixing it up um but i do understand the like 
the audacity of like a fake dive bar. It's like, what? just either like go to an authentic dive bar or go where you really want to go. Like, you're like, oh, I want yeah. dive, but not sticky tables. Like it's very, um, yeah. you want everything catered <laughs> I, to you. I want there to be a row of fans and it to be well lit. <laughs> yeah. And a huge <laughs> sign that says cocktails. Yeah. I'll go to a dive bar if it's not like a dive, you know? <laughs> yeah. So I do understand that. Oh, my other, one of my other highlights, there were a couple of moments Oh, there were a few moments at this this big uh, pool. Should we call it a pool party? It was a, a slip and slide party. Yeah. Uh, quite a That's lot a happening there. <laughs> it was, um, <laughs> this is a rich text. Um, so I'll just go <laughs> very quickly. One thing that made me LOL is there's a sign on the char- charcuterie board table that says, I love you to the moon and back. And that's just a little girl world thing that makes me laugh is little signs that say things that don't make any sense that you're just like, it's not the charcuterie (laughs) board. Like that doesn't like, that's so stupid, but it's like, you just like, you're just like, oh, it's cute. It says something like, I don't know. There's something indefinably silly about that. That made me laugh. Um, (laughs) I wrote, I'm impressed by Heather's use of the term dalliance in a flashback. She says that, oh, you two had a dalliance. Um, Yeah. So there's a part at the slip and slide at the champagne slip and slide party where a fight breaks out. There's a very intense conversation happening. Didn't fully understand the backstory, but that's fine. And two of the girls are talking to each other and they say, do we suck for not going over there? And the other one's like, I mean, there's no room on the chairs. Like, and she says it in such a way that like yeah. really, really cut me up. Just like, there's no room on the chair. It's just like such a, <laughs> such a move I would make first of all, where I'm like, I don't want to get involved in that. I will take any excuse to not be part of that conversation. But that, that really made me laugh. But then they all go over there. Like, but then they're all like, "We're all going." <laughs> and then everybody's just like, like, just flies on a piece of meat on a table. Just everybody's crowding around them, like, "I'm part of this conversation." <laughs> oh, and then that it's made really me laugh too, thing. where they all descend on them, and then the two that are talking, one of them goes to the other. I'd like to talk to you alone, actually. And they act like they weren't trying to do that in the first place, and then they're like, "Okay, let's yeah. go over here," and it's just very cartoonish. Yeah, very silly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This was a this was a fantastic scene. I uh, I love Jen showing up in black for her own funeral. Like I oh, yeah. immediately made that mental note. I was like, oh yeah, she's dressed in black for her own funeral. And then she made that exact same joke in in her confessional. But it totally was like it was a complete setup on the part of Tamra for um, to set her up with uh, her ex friend Heather Dick Pick Heather or whatever. Yes. Um, coming to like start shit uh i yeah i i thought it was really uh really nice little visual touch that we got for her entrance there oh the shadow of the netting on her face was so yeah high camp yeah. like i loved it <laughs> yeah. yeah um oh here's a quote from jen i really liked i don't remember the context of this um Shame on you for hurting me once. Shame on me if I keep letting you do this. <laughs> <laughs> like way to way to restate an extremely popular saying in a worse way. That's the yeah. thing. I love when people get something wrong. People confidently saying something wrong is one of my favorite things. Like if there's like a sound alike word and you use the the sound the wrong one but you're just saying it in such a like it's in a moment of like being very defensive that's that's just like the funniest thing for me because you're making a buffoon of yourself (laughs) while you think that you're winning so yeah i uh i laughed and laughed um i have i you said to look out for shady editing uh i found a couple oh there was one okay two in a row shane um She's like, oh, well, that's like saying, is the sky blue? Like, did Tamara take her tits out? Like, is the sky blue? And he was like, is Shane handsome? Uh, Or no, wait, that wasn't the one. That was just that was just a random thing that bothered me because I was like, Shane makes no effort. When men are on these kind of shows and they make no effort with their appearance and these women make all the effort. I'm like, just do something. That was just random. No, there was a there was a shady thing. 
it was Vicky talking about her Vicky's, boyfriend uh, partner. Yeah, yeah. When she's yeah. like, I mean, have you seen him? And then they show the most yeah. average photo of him and they just cut like to it. Like a slow it. zoom on like a very tired old man's face. Very just tired like... old man. It felt very shady. And there was another one where Jen and Ryan are getting spiritual healing and they made the editing was so wackadoo bananas. They were just like so good. doing this woman no favors. They were like, we're not going to make, they're not even going to try and make this look normal. Like, like when, when she was like, hey, and they just like, and then Amazing. she stops and he goes, I've been writing in my journal. And she's like, oh, great. And like, it was... Yeah. That was my, my favorite part. So yes. absurd. <laughs> And, and just to go from like earlier on when Timer's talking about Jen and they're like, oh, we're like, is she going to therapy? And it's like, yeah, her, her therapist's a psychic. And then to just like call back to that later by seeing them in therapy with this, this woman just like interminably going, eh. And oh, it killed me. That was hilarious. I loved and, it. And I just spiritual... love seeing the like, yeah, the kooky shit these people do instead of like doing like you know, any kind of actual therapy, just like the the weird, insane shit they do. Um, and I love this intuitive healer. I hope she becomes a cast member. She's the best. <laughs> oh, I would love, I would love it. She was so, and I think this was the editing, but she was so on demand because she asked a legit question. And, and then like, Jen was like, Oh no, you know what? Why don't you just, um, she says something like, why don't you just go into the healing? And then she's like, Hey, like, and it was just like abrupt. <laughs> She's like, all right, cool. <laughs> and that was <laughs> hilarious to me. Um, and also good for her. I couldn't just like slip into something like that. Um, oh, and you mentioned this earlier, but Loco Buon Tempo with the Tres Amigos um, oh, yeah. was very <laughs> funny to me. Because I looked up, I'd never heard Buon Tempo before, and it said that it meant weather. So I don't know if that's just like a bad translation, but if it is the real translation, that's very funny is to be like, crazy weather with the three <laughs> friends, like is a funny thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I liked, oh, and then, yeah, the the cliffhanger at the end of this where I honestly couldn't make head nor tails of like, there was a dick pic thing flying around and then there was a thing of like Shannon's relationship and what's going on there. I really couldn't understand any of that. But when she's like, if this gets out, my relationship is over. I was like, oh, damn. Now I kind of really want to watch. Like it really it was juicy for me. I liked it. It was an yeah. insane cliffhanger, especially since they, the last thing we see is just this weird little cup to, to Vicky making some ex bizarre noise. And she's just like, ah! And that's like the last <laughs> moment we get before they cut, they, they smash cut to black. It was oh. it was such an, a, a crazy ending. I loved it. And Vicky, <laughs> yeah, by I the love way. It. <laughs> oh, just quickly. I don't want to be shady, but Vicky's got crazy eyes. So like you cut to her anytime oh, yeah. and I'm like, ah! <laughs> like, so she certainly makes a dramatic cut to Vicky for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I love any time that we get like a, a fourth wall break where we see like production having to react to the, the story in real time. And so seeing, you know, Shannon want to be off mic. And like, I, I just thought this whole scene at the table was so good. The way that it built up to like Shannon being like, I know immediately what they're referring to and I need right. to get this mic off of me. I thought that that was such a compelling way to end this. Mm -hmm. It was also really great to see Vicky back on screen because she has not been on the show in like three years or something oh. like that. Um, and she's the OG of the OC. She was on season one until like season 14 or 15 wow. or something like that. Um, so she's got such a huge history, especially with Shannon and, and Tamara. So seeing them together, she should have never been like put on break. She should have never been put on pause. Um, it's great to see her back and immediately like in a meaningful capacity. I think it kind of contrasts something that we saw on Real Housewives of Atlanta this season where they brought back the OGs of Atlanta for the most part, the OGs um, for like a lunch and it had like zero consequence. It was, you know, just really Fat nothing service, basically. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So to see Vicky immediately at the table for something important happening was really nice. And uh, it felt to me like, Oh, OC is like 
is back. It was, and I love that makes sense when you say they're like the OG because there's a dynamic between Vicky and or uh, Shannon and Tamra when Shannon was just sitting there with her mouth closed and she was like, well, no one's talking shit about me. And, and Tamara was like, uh, and like, didn't, I don't think said anything the whole time, just sat there with her mouth, like forcibly closed in such a way that Shannon was like, wait, they are, I know exactly what this is about. Oh shit. And like, it just exploded from there. And like watching Tamara just sit there with her lips pursed while Shannon freaked out was like, a very fun dynamic that they know each other that mm. well. Yeah. Yeah. That was what was yeah. great about this. Just the way that they tap into knowing each other so well that they can read each other's expressions and eye movements was like really entertaining. Yeah. And, yeah, and also just knowing, knowing the game, right? Like mm-hmm. just like, I think we often talk about Shannon just being kind of like clumsy and unstrategic and just like, just really like messy, but still likable. And this kind of shows like she's been in the game long enough. She knows exactly what is coming around and yeah. was able to pick up on it without any words being uttered. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Tamara's version of a poker face is hilarious. Uh, I... <laughs> <laughs> just inhales her own lips. Yeah. She's like, nope, <laughs> nope. Like, yeah, I, uh, it was quite the bombshell moment. And, um, it did make me at least want to tune in for one more. Oh yes, hopefully it's a it's a good one and it completely hooks you. Yeah. Um, Dylan, do you have any highlights from OC that we haven't gone over? Uh, just little things. The the ancient mother named Paris, pronounced Perry for some reason. That was oh, yeah. I don't know if she was entertaining to me. <laughs> uh, I do like that we get Tamar doing another like really over the top apology. Um, when she's talking to Jen, uh, which we've, we've seen her do that uh, before, just like instead of doing like the hedging your bets kind of apology, they usually do just going like full on like fucking, oh, I apologize unreservably. I'm the worst. I'll cut off my pinky finger and present it to you in a little <laughs> cushion. Uh, and, and, but it actually gets results this time. Like it, she actually like breaks through to Jen and Jen like starts talking about like, uh, oh, you know, like why these comments hurt me because I actually am insecure about my relationship and he actually you know my partner actually did do something that hurt me and uh that we actually get like a little bit more of a of emotion from jen um uh, showing why she's been reacting the way she does like uh tamara's like a crazy exaggerated theatrical apology actually actually works it actually breaks her down uh so i really enjoyed that uh, a lot um you know i love little waiter cameos in these shows i always get to point out a good waiter cameo and i do love the old man uh who should that for the trace amigos uh lunch she was just like <laughs> welcome to mozambique uh, I, I really like the welcome to mozambique guy <laughs> he, was, he was great five stars for him and when Tamara's um, like, if that's what she's having, then where are they? like when when people are going like yeah girl and the waiter's just like okay like I've been, yeah. I've been that server many a time where you're yeah. just watching someone else have an amazing time, and you're like, "Great!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, I think we pretty much covered everything for me. Yeah, I think we covered through most of my notes as well. There was one other note about Gina that I had that I thought was striking when she was talking about how the infidelity, like is um, lasting has a bigger impact on her than the domestic violence incident that she had with her ex. Um, I thought that it was just really uh, a striking comment. And I um, really appreciate, I've said before that I think Gina is um, very like sincere and emotionally honest. And I think she's having a really good season. Um, And this was just another moment that really, added to the full picture of her because I think it's, you know, I think that that takes a lot of um, self awareness, I guess, or introspection to like come to that sort of conclusion and then to air it. And I'm, you know, I don't want to make assumptions, but I feel like there probably are people that have had similar situations to her um, who are, you know, might have a similar feelings inside. And um, it almost seems 
would seem like taboo to kind of express that. And so I appreciated her emotional honesty and her willingness to put that out there. I thought that was really, uh, really fantastic. Yeah, I forgot about that. But I, I wrote somewhere in here, wait, what was he charged with? And then I Googled it and I was like, ah, and then she started talking about it. And I was like, I cannot believe we are getting this real on. I don't think I ever expected this show to delve into those waters. Um, and and like you said, it might be taboo to, I think feelings are messy and reactions don't make sense. And it probably like society would dictate that this is the thing that should be the more serious than this thing. But it was the betrayal for her. And I almost that almost makes sense to me. And um, I, yeah, I really, um, that was, that was definitely a striking moment where I thought it was weighty and uh, I was, I was impressed with the honesty. Yeah. Cause I think like, you know, there's probably a lot of like shame that she carries as a result of those feelings. Like, cause that like intuitively just, you know, you would think that, it was like a, a very serious uh, a domestic incident that, that happened. And um, you would think that that would kind of trump anything else that would, any other trauma associated with that relationship. And so for her to kind of come forward and, and be like, well, it was actually this like betrayal that is affecting me more. Um, I feel like there, you know, people might, um, feel shame for caring feelings like that. So I definitely appreciate her coming out with that. Um, another little moment that I had written down here was uh, there's just like during the montage of the, the glam moments, we got a, a little scene where Jen was getting ready and has a, like a call from Ryan. And he, he makes a joke about like, it's like, Oh, can I get the, the rest of the girls numbers? Cause I've got this like dick that yeah. I'm working on, <laughs> which like, it's really, um, really like off color and like kind of inappropriate because it, it seems pretty clear to me that he like, he did send an unsolicited dick pic, which is, you know, not cool. And for him to be like making a joke about it and really like diminishing actual feelings that someone would have about this is like really inappropriate. And then we get Jen like following it up with like, isn't he such a sweetheart? Like he's just such a sweet little cutie for making a joke like this. Yeah. But what he, what he's doing is he's underlining to Jen, uh, how much, uh, there's the other people's story is fake. You know, mm. that's what, right. Like he, he's, he's yeah. reinforcing his narrative by being like, like what their, their accusation that I intentionally sent the dick pic to somebody else is so absurd that why don't we joke about it? Me and you, you know, he's, he's reinforcing th- yeah. their story against, uh, against other people's. That's interesting. I forgot about that. And I meant to ask about that because I was like, if it's actually all been blown out of proportion and he's like a good guy and this didn't happen, then that is a funny joke to make. If not, it's kind of gaslighty and, like you said, reinforcing the narrative. And, like, we both know this is stupid, right, babe? Like, kind of manipulative. And so, yeah, that was um, – I hadn't highlighted it, but that was when I wrote in my notes for sure where I was like, oh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. So, yeah, that's interesting because, like I said, I couldn't make head nor tails of it. So if we're like, no, this guy sucks and he did do this thing – then yeah, I feel entirely differently about the joke. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it makes me, oh, it makes me want to shake her and be like, you gotta see things for what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I guess like some context about like what we do and don't know about this situation to like, I guess, inform any judgments we want to make. Uh, he has like said that like he did send this dick pic. That is a, is a fact but his explanation for it was that um he's only got like four people in his snapchat he's got his kids he's got jen and he's got this heather girl and he accidentally sent worse, it to all of them uh, oh yeah okay i, I didn't, didn't realize his kids got it too yeah. <laughs> yeah but i i don't know i i don't buy it he seems like 
they haven't talked about his kids actually getting it. They haven't like mentioned that. They haven't like yeah. delved into that. It just seems like a, a flimsy excuse. There's, it doesn't pass the gut check for me. That's for sure. But then there was that. There was that flashback. I think when she uses the word dalliance, when she's like, "Oh, you guys were on a break." Like, so was that was that part of the dick pic, pic narrative, or is that a different thing entirely? So there is like a little bit of it's kind of unclear the timeline for Jen's relationship. That's something that people have been questioning on the show. So she's a brand new housewife this season, Jen. And um, so they're kind of questioning like, oh, has Ryan actually cheated on her in the past? And she's like, well, he slept with someone, but they were on a break or something like that. And I'm not entirely sure where this dick pic fits into that that yeah. timeline um haven't got the like the yarn on the on the wall <laughs> and like trace out the the map yet but um yeah it, it's still a little bit unclear to me it seems pretty obvious that he is at the very least a pretty like sleazy guy we've seen this archetype before on like in a bunch of different iterations on this show so yeah. um i don't know like not to like judge a book by its cover, but I don't know. We've, we've read a few pages now. I I feel (laughs) like. (laughs) Yeah. And there was, you know, psychologically when Jen in the flashback, when the person's like, I think it was, Heather was like, Oh, well, so you guys were on a break. And she's like, yeah, yeah. It was just, and she looked so relieved that this person was like, not going to take her to task and be like, this guy sucks. That, the story was being bought. Um, There was a little like red flag for me that I was like, Ooh, she Mm -hmm. in the back of her mind, she's not okay with this either, but she has this story that she's been comforting herself with. So when someone can reinforce that story for her, she's like, yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And like, I did kind of read that. Yeah. We've been seeing a lot of that from Jen and and then Tamara kind of finally gets her to kind of, breakthrough to her actual feelings where she's that she, she is hurt by it that's the and the napkin in the face was i did yeah. i did look up that specific clip because it was referenced and i was like you know i don't love a napkin in the face but i've been there <laughs> i've been there with a friend before at the breaking point where you're like why can't you see this and like i've never thrown things at them but i do I understand. And I don't know if that's just because I like Tamra, but I was like, eh, that's okay. (laughs) (laughs) 